Hello there, and welcome to this Programming Constructs video as part of OCR J276 GCC Computer Science. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at Programming Constructs, Sequencing, Selection, Iteration. These are three constructs that you will need to know for how to do for your exams and also for your programming project. So let's get started. There's the learning outcomes for today. You can see what we're doing and you can see the challenge that we're putting into place. And first of all, we are going to be looking at sequencing. As you can probably tell with sequencing, it goes from one to the next to the next. So for example, in this stage, we ask the person's name. It then moves on to them to be able to enter their age, which then moves on to them entering their favorite shoe size. And then their favorite Avenger, which everyone knows is going to be Captain America. So sequencing goes from one to two to three to four. So if I've got a crowd of 30 people, I want to high five all of them. I will use sequencing because I'll high five person one, person two, person three, person four, all the way down until I've high fived everybody in the room. We've then got selection. Um, and what this is doing is this is making a form of decision. So we're going to enter the name, we are going to enter the age, and then we're going to look at the age and see if the age is less than 16. If the answer is less than 16, they're going to be told they can't buy a lottery ticket. If they're not, we're going to say they can buy a lottery ticket. So, so what selection is doing is we're putting in some information and then based on this information, we're going to select a particular response. And finally, we're using iteration. And what this is doing is being able to enter people's names. So we're saying we've got a variable here called count which is equal to zero. And then, while count is less than six, we're going to enter the name, enter the age. At which point, count is worth count plus plus, which is count plus one. So count at the moment is worth zero. So it's worth zero plus one. So then count is now worth one. And then we go back. Because count is less than six. And then we go back, go back, go back. When we get all the way through it and count is then worth 5, 5 equals 5 plus 1 is then equal to 6, at which point count is now greater than 6, so we're going to stop doing this. So what this version of iteration is doing is allowing us to loop a particular number of times. One pointer for each of these diagrams is that these are just shapes that I've put in place. If we're creating as flow charts, inputs and outputs need to be as parallelograms. And you'll see about these more in another video. Because input and output uses parallelograms. You can see this a little bit more on here. We've got a decision diamond here. So if you're doing a decision, we need to use yes, no. On this one here, we can see in this box here, we've got count equals zero. This is a process. This is a bit of maths. It does need to be in a rectangle. The other shape you need to be aware of the flow chart is start and stop. And they have their own little ovals. And then if you're going to be doing any functions, that is a rectangle with two lines in it. So we can then differentiate between the two. But that's just a little bit of information that you might want to use later on. So we want to know what selection, iteration, sequencing is and why it's used. So here we've got some pseudocode um, and we can see how the sequencing is going along. It's exactly the same example as before. So we're outputting, what is your name? Name equals input. Output, how old are you? Age equals input. Output, what shoe size are you? Shoes equals input. Output, what is your favorite Avenger? Avenger equals input. So with this, if this was an exam question, you will make get marks for identifying the correct usages of output and for input. If an exam question says in a user-friendly way, you need to make sure we're writing something like this. If we just say output question, that's not user-friendly. Even if we just did output, not user-friendly. This is user friendly. If we're looking at a selection, again, it's the same idea again. We've got this if statement here. So this section is the same as before. And again, look at the indentation here. 
indentation is really important when you're programming in your programming language of choice as well as when you're doing pseudocode. And again, with this question here, if it was being asked as a six mark exam question, you'd get one mark for these two, one mark for comparing age, one mark for less than 16, outputting in a user-friendly way, and then using the else and outputting in a user-friendly way to give you your six marks. Even if you're not sure what to do when you see this exam question, you know that you need to input name and age, names and ages. That's going to give you a mark. You know you need to output things in a user-friendly way. That can give you another couple of marks as well. So you really need to make sure if you're not sure, have a go at it anyway. And then we've got iteration. So we've got our count here. We've then got our count here. And then we've got the text here. And then we've got the iteration here. So again, if this was a six marker, one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks, six marks. So then we can carry on with the loop. So again, I'm not sure why that's there. We can just get rid of that. Uh, how can you write pseudocode for sequencing, selection, and iteration? Get, right, have a go writing some pseudocode. Hope this video has been helpful for you. We shall see you later on. Bye-bye.